Hi there. In this video, I am walking you through how my process for making little mini uh, collaged um, four by four canvases. And I take basically just paper that I have done um, mark making on quick sketches, like faces and things like that. But nothing, um, nothing too crazy or difficult. And Basically, by cutting them down, I work on little sheets larger than four by four. Then I cut them down and then collage them on to uh, the four by fours. And when you do a collection of those, it's amazing what the results might be. Now, initially, my idea was, and I in the beginning of the video, I kind of talk about this. I plan to do all faces because I have done this before, and and I did a mixture of faces and um, different mark making and collage of things, kind of similar to these ones back here, which I think are six by six. But what I realized when I laid it out, laid out the ones that I, I kind of started and, and I'll demo some of that for you, the quick sketches that I do. But um, I realized, I think what I wanted, the look I was going for is not, um, it was a little, they were a little too small. So I think I might try it again, but I would, I'm gonna either go six by six or 10 by 10. And I think a collection of those um, would be really cool. But I think the four by fours were just too small for me. And it's just like the faces kind of got lost in their, their smallness. Um, so, but I do like them mixed in with the other abstract kind of forms and, and marks and things like that. So I do like having the mix, but I decided not to just do pure uh, faces for this one. And I think that's part of, you know, like this creative journey is, you, you, you head one way and then you have to pivot sometimes because it doesn't, it isn't actually the way that you wanted to go. So anyway, I hope that you will give these a try because honestly, those little four by four canvases, they are very inexpensive. Um, Michael's has them and um, with a deep edge and everything, I think, I, yeah, I mean, I think they, they come on sale a lot and they are an inexpensive way to work. So, um, you know, you can buy 12 at a time or something. And so anyway, I would highly recommend doing it. It's very, it feels very rewarding because, you you know, it's very simple to do and they're very small and you can, you know, take your sheets of, of collage papers that you've already made and just cut them down. So you're using, you know, kind of what you have already made. In fact, you don't even have to go make any new ones and then just come down and see, but like make a big stack of them so that you have lots to choose from so that you can get this really cool collection of your own artwork and in a tw in like 12 little minis. It's like, it's, it's, it's really fun. So anyway, um, I hope you give this a try. And if you do, let me know how it goes. And um, anyway, let's get started. I just received my, this big box from Michael's and no, this is not a big, you know, one of those art haul videos. I just wanted to show you how excited I was. Although the box has some, tears on this side I um I wanted to show you all my um oh it's a box inside a box so I wanted to show you all the little canvases have arrived for this project that I wanted to show you I have um four by four canvases and I want to say I have 50 so it's super exciting because I'm going to do this big I've done this before uh, in abstracts, and this one um, I'm going to do primarily in portraits, and so I'm super excited to get started. And they are just the Loft, Artist Loft brand, which is kind of a lower end brand, but they are the deep edge. They are the, I don't know if you can see that, they're the, um, it's, I think it's one and a half inch deep edge four by fours. So, and it looks really fun all together um in a collection so i just wanted to show you the, the excitement is here I, I finally i got finally got them and i want to unbox them with you and i'm going to show you each step of the way for creating a collection obviously you don't need to collect you don't need to create 50 of them but um i'll show you my process and how i work in um these multiples like this the first step is obviously getting them out of the packaging and um, from there you can see they look they're so cute they're so cute I love them um, the next step is uh, I would if, if I were doing this off camera I would probably take every single one of them 
you know, take them all out of their packaging. But for this, for this purposes, I'm just going to, I'm going to just work on a few right now just to show you the steps that I take and how I get started. And then, you know, I'll kind of work on that, some of that off camera, obviously, and then come back and show you the next step after that. Okay, I have all of my uh, little four by fours out of their packaging. And the first step, what I've discovered the easiest to do first is to paint the edges. Now, I always, I a, while, a long time ago, about 99% of my um, canvases, I paint with the exact same color on the edges, ivory black. I've started using the Blick Ar Ar Artist Acrylic, which is a nice, you know, kind of similar to a heavy body. I used to use Liquitex, but I just found that this comes, I like this tube and it's a little bit more affordable. The reason that I always use the same exact color and I do not mix it or anything is if I need to touch up the edges, which a lot of times I do, I'm, you know, I paint something and then I tap it onto something and it, it needs a little touch up. Then I have, I know exactly what paint and what sheen it will be when I paint it and it will match. So that early on was a problem for me, but I've found by using the exact same color paint all the time for the edges. I know a lot of artists will wrap their painting around the edges. Um, or they'll frame them so then it's not it, it's a different issue than you're you know you're working on something different i've just found that black works great it kind of feels like it 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 becomes a little bit more unseen in terms of when it's hanging you could also probably use white or gray or something like that just a, a neutral that then just kind of flows from the painting so anyway the first step that i do is i um i kind of line my little guys up and um i start by painting the edge and um, it's sometimes I have to put a well. This is this is pretty thick here. Uh, I um, will some get, a lot of times get end up with two coats, and I'm not sure this maybe I need to needed to stir up, but um, it's not going on real good. But because you are painting, you know, black on white, you know those little those little spots of white will really show up if you you, you know like even this is a decent coat. But as you can see, the white is still coming through. So um, in, t in general, I will give each of them two coats just to make sure it's covered. And I also, the reason that I started doing this before instead of after, only when I'm working on my littles like this, because what was happening was I would collage the top and then I would have like a slight white across the bottom there. And it was really difficult to paint that afterwards. So I've just started painting beforehand. And so I just paint them in a row. I'll just line them up, get yourself all lined up. And then I just paint uh, one side and then I go back and, you know, paint the other. Obviously you can paint two sides before you need to, um, you know, worry about paint getting on, you know, you, you know, obviously you can only paint two sides at a time and let, let, let the paint dry. And, you know, I'm not, it isn't always going to take overnight, but it is getting warmer, at least here in Seattle. And so my paint is drying faster and obviously acrylic paint uh, does dry pretty fast. So anyway, this is the next step. So all, <laughs> all the, the littles will be painted, all their edges, and this can be somewhat time consuming and tedious. So I would suggest that you focus on this. You know, you could have something else going on at the same time, or you could do it in between other projects. Um, that's kind of what I do. It's like, oh, okay, let me get over there and, and um, or I kind of use it as a warm up, even just like, okay, I, I'm going to go paint 10 sides and then I'll get on to something, something else. But uh, you'll be so happy when all of them are painted. Then you can just go to putting your collage or your painting right on top and you don't have to mess with it. And they're, you know, because they are so little, uh, you know, it can, it, it goes fairly fast, so and it dries fairly fast. So this is the next step, and um, so paint your edges, and then we'll go on to the next thing. All right, now all of my uh, little minis um, have been painted on each side, and so uh, the next thing I have to do is go back and touch up the. Um, if you can see this, like they're just it doesn't sometimes it doesn't cover in the one in the first coat, so. Some are gonna need more paint than others. So then obviously I'm just gonna go back to my trusty ivory black, my Blick ivory black, and then just give them a quick, you know, second coat on the parts that, that need it. So I really like this, this phase 
to be completed and to the best. I mean, I obviously touching up isn't so bad before I actually start collaging um, the onto the front because it just makes it much easier because they're so small. When I have something on the surface here, it gets kind of tricky along the edge to start painting up against it. It just, I, I've done it that way and it just did not prove to be as efficient. So even though this part, you know, can tend to be, you know, this is not the fun part, right? It's not the part um, that we want to get to. So anyway, I'm going to go back over the edges of the, of the little minis that need, um, need to be touched up. And when that is done, then I'm going to start on the, um, the collage papers because I am not going to paint directly on here, although you could. I had uh, the last round that I did, I had so much fun. I had made all these different, these ones with a lot of different um, uh, random marks and book paper showing through and all these different things. And then, you know, just collage them onto this, this surface. And then I could cut them down to fit this size. So I tend to work a little bit bigger and then cut them down to fit onto this. And it just, it's just, it turns out great. And it takes away, this is a really small, for me to work on. But if I work bigger and then cut it down to fit this, I get a better result. So if you, if you like painting directly this tiny, that's, that's good. But I, I'm, I, I'm going to paint on a different uh, substrate, a book paper, um, deli paper, different th materials like that. And then, you know, just adhere those to here. So anyway, back to what I'm actually working on, which is finishing up these edges. And then we will come back and um, I will show you how I'm going to start uh, making my my uh, portraits. Before I get started, I have uh, gessoed with clear gesso. Oh my gosh, so many pages. I, I'm so glad I did this one. I just sometimes if I don't have anything, I just I don't feel creative. Even if I just grab my gesso and start putting it on these all these book papers, then um, when I when I am in a creative space, I can just grab my paper and start sketching on top of it. But basically, when I want to show you how I do that, I just have a stack of of old papers. Now, of course, I'm going to want to make sure that um, you know that it's going to wide enough when i cut this down you know it's going to fit i'm just going to cut it four by four which is the size of this but if your paper is too small obviously you can't cut it down and i want to work slightly larger so that i can cut that uh cut that down and have that image on here so this gives me room to kind of be a little more expressive versus if i'm working on this tiny piece i get really tight so, well, actually, I don't think I've ever done anything on this kind of a tiny piece, but, you know, there are people who are really good at, you know, like miniature art, but that is not me. Um, so I work larger and then cut it down to fit. So you want to make sure your paper isn't cut too small. Now, what I have also found when, with collage paper is the thinner, the older, the better. This stuff is really old and it's going to, it just almost melts down onto, uh, when I, when I use a uh, matte medium to collage it onto the, uh, the canvas. So, um, I'm using, you know, papers that are a little bit older, a little bit, you know, big enough, the big, a big enough size. So, um, anyway, I just want to show you how I quickly do this and I'm probably going to just use, I'm going to just put it straight on here. Um, you know, you don't, you don't have to do that, but <laughs> it, uh, makes it a little bit easier and then you're not wasting any and you can kind of see in this case the the uh, paper is really absorbing which would which is what it would do with your paint or your um, your water or whatever it is that you put on there so this pr provides protects the surface not protects it but it basically adds a layer so that when you put paint on it's not as absorbent as it would be otherwise so as you can see it's just a a quick layer. It's not like there's any right or wrong way to put it on. You can, um, you know, put as much or as little on there as you want. Um, but generally you can kind of just see that it's the page is damp. I haven't gone all the way to the edges because I know I probably, even if I work to the edges, I'm not going to, it, it's not going to matter. It, it will change how the paint looks. So if you're very particular, definitely go all the way to the edges. But I'm for the purpose of what I'm doing, I don't think it really matters. So I'm going to do one more um, just so you get the, the gist of what's happening and use up what's on my paintbrush, which is, you know, something pretty good at. I, I like to use every last drop before I put it into the my water 
so that I'm not pouring out a bunch of paint or mediums down the drain. And if I don't have a paper in front of me, then I definitely will clean off my brush in an art journal or on a random piece of paper or something. You can also just have a paper towel at the ready. But again, I'm trying to use less. I use rags more than I use paper towels. I just, I don't, I, I don't want to have a lot of waste when I'm making my art. I'm a real big proponent of, you know, using up what you have and then not creating a lot of waste around it. So of course I do, but to the degree that I can limit that, I, I try. So anyway, that's your next step. And then, um, then we're going to get on to sketching um, out some simple, fast, these are going to be fast uh, uh, portraits that we're going to put on our littles. For these first ones, I am going to, well, I guess I'm showing you this. Um, I have a box full of reference photos that I have just printed out in black and white. I, I don't uh, actually paint them so that it looks like this person at the end. It's just to give me um, a value scale to see the lights and darks and to kind of give me a basic framework for what I want to do. And obviously, if I'm doing three to five minute sketches with, um, with I'm, and I'm doing those in black and white this time, I'm not going to get very far. The idea is I'm trying to loosen up because I want to, I have 50 something of these to paint. And I know that probably half of them I'm not going to actually want to use. So I just, I have to get started. And so the first round, I am just do, using um, black and white. So I have some, some um, carbon black and some titanium white, a Stabilo pencil, a charcoal pencil, a charcoal block white, a Stabilo woody white, and then a few brushes. And I might, you know, I might end up grabbing some other stuff, but I'm really, I just want to kind of plow through. I'm just painting on um, book paper this time, although I guess I could grab I could grab some uh, deli paper, but I think I'm just gonna, cause I'm just getting started. I think I'll just uh, work on this today. And then um, maybe the next round I'll bring in some deli paper. Now I say that and I'm like, eh, maybe I'll bring in the deli paper this round, I don't know. Anyway, I have it right over here if I need to grab it. But I'm gonna set my um, reference photos off to the side and then I'm just gonna, you know, kind of pull them up as I need, as I need to, so that I, um, you know, so that I'm kind of working looking at the reference, not really looking so much at what I'm, what I'm doing. I guess the idea is to be a little bit looser because I'm timing myself. So I'm not actually going to, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to talk through any of it. It's just, it's going to be fairly straightforward. I'm just going to do all of it and fast forward. And this might take some time over. I'm not going to do 50 today, obviously. So I, I you know, this is going to take, um, doing, you know, over a series of days. So probably I'll try to video as much of it as I can. This is obviously round one, and then I'll just keep going. And at the end, um, I'll kind of show you the next process after, after I've gone through this. My goal is to keep a pretty uh, limited palette all the way through, but who knows, maybe by the third or fourth round, I will want to get crazy and add some color in, which, you know, I'm not just going to stick with black and white, but, um, Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. You just, I just, I don't know where it's going and I don't want to project where it's going. So anyway, um, let's get started.
Okay, I have all of my um, my four by fours painted, double coated on all the sides. That does not mean that you will not have to touch them up later, but they're fair, fairly prepped for the next phase, which is um, to cut pa the papers into four by fours. Now, I know initially I had talked about doing um, the whole set in um, in faces, uh, in, but I have ch kind of changed my mind and decided to do faces and uh, kind of marks and uh, uh, abstracts instead because I laid out a few um, and I'll show you a photo of that. And I, I just felt like if I'm going to do that, it needs to be either six by six or maybe even 10 by 10 and do a collection of those. So moving forward, I might consider that. But for now, I'm just going to show you how I actually take these papers um, and then decide, you know, I won't show you all of them, but I, I cut a ton because I have about 54 by fours. I cut a ton so that I have options and I literally um, will just cut a, you know, a smooth side. You could do this with scissors and a ruler or on a grid. Um, but I have found the best luck is, you know, obviously using this, this rotary cutter. So for, from here, I would just, you know, line it up with the, on the four inches, pull it, and then uh, another four inches. It's just super fast. So right out of the gate, I have one, you know, that I like. So I'm going to show you one that's a little trickier. And then I'll do a few of these and just put it in a fast. Uh, so like this one, I might want to choose what section. So I might carefully go around and trim the edges. And then I can decide, okay, so in this paper, in this case, you know, the width is narrow, so I'm not going to have a lot of options, but where, what part do I like the best? And I do kind of like how this is going off. I do kind of like the squiggly part in the middle. So, you know, do I want this as my main part or do I want to kind of capture a little bit of this? So I'm, I'm just going to kind of cut it a few times and then make some decisions about where I want it to go. So let's take a little bit more off down here. And... I think I'm going to just continue to take it off there. So as you can see, you know, you get to make choices from based on the, the main um, photo that you have. Wh what parts do you want to keep and what parts do you not want to keep? So something like this, for example, I'm not really sure. So again, I'm just going to trim the edges and um, again, being cognizant of the, the, the you know, your, your width, which is your narrow part. Um, and then, you know, obviously lining it up straight. So this is kind of what I'm left with. I'm thinking I like this part up here better. So I'm going to cut that part off. Um, I'm just going to keep making decisions based on that. I'm going to cut a little bit more off down here. Uh, see what it looks like at the four. I might just go for it. Okay. So this is what I'm left with, kind of a check. And I like that. So I'll set that aside as well. So I'm going to do a few of these you know, and fast forward just so you can get the idea of it. And even maybe one of these faces because obviously cutting that down. And then uh, I'll show you the next step. Okay, I now have a massive stack of four by fours. And I would highly recommend that you have a lot because then it makes them not precious. And as you can see, when I was cutting down the papers, um, you know, when you look at the paper that this came from, it might have it, it might have actually been pretty ugly, but you can typically find a spot that maybe looks interesting to you. And it may or may not work. 
I will say some of these are from the prior um, round of these little ones that I made and I kept, I, I just held on to them. So I'm going to show you kind of just with this small section that I could get on camera, I'm going to show you kind of how I start laying them out and how I make decisions. Um, a lot of times, obviously I have, you know, like three times this amount, but I just kind of wanted to give you an idea. So let's just say I wanted to start with some faces. We'll just use these as an example. Um, I might, and then I might just kind of put the other faces aside. And then I might go, okay, what goes with this one? There's another face. Um, and just kind of build up from there, uh, making decisions. Now, does that mean, and if I see that the blue doesn't really go, maybe I skip that one for now. Um, maybe I like this face better than that face. Maybe I wanna have one more face. Let's grab that one back. Or maybe this lighter one, kind of a little more unique. Um, and so I just start laying them out, not necessarily in any particular order, because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start editing. I'm going to kind of say, okay, I like this one. I don't like this one. That one's too bright um, or whatever it happens to be. That's not the look I'm going for, for this in this one, or I've got too many that have this kind of look on them. I don't see anything in this color. And so then I might come to this one and go, okay. For this, this little section, this, I really feel like this maybe goes better than this one. Um, and for this, maybe I say I want, I don't want something that's kind of representational. I want to keep them a more abstract. And the only thing is the faces, you know, or I have all this color. So I'm going to take this face out and I'm going to add, I'm going to add some green. So maybe I do bring this one back in. So anyway, it's a lot about going back and forth and choosing and, and picking what looks best all together. Um, I typically put together uh, sets of nine, um, although I think all 50 would look so cool if you were to, you know, if there was to be a, a, a wall big enough to, you know, to have that. But you can kind of see from here, I mean, obviously there's so many choices. Here's another green one. So maybe I want to swap this one for the green because I got green going on up there. And maybe I want to swap this for that. You know, it just, it, 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 um, it kind of helps when you start putting them out and then you just make choices. But if you, if you don't have a lot to choose from, um, then it's, it's harder because each one is then precious. But this way I, I could change them out all day long. And you can see a lot of the marks are super simple. And so by itself, it's nothing. But then if I were to put it, you know, if I put it here with this, it, it kind of comes to life a little bit more. So I think these are really fun in that um, the canvases are relatively inexpensive and, you know, working on, you know, book paper like this is very inexpensive. And I would recommend you could work on anything. And I think I had mentioned in a prior one, um, working on the deli paper, which I'll grab a sheet just for the sake of, of showing you. Um, it's like this, it's this really thin paper. I will say with my rotary cutter, it's very difficult to cut this. So you might have, uh, I, I found you could, I could do it, but it's very time intensive and I do not come out. I do not have the best results cutting it like that. So um, if you're using scissors or something, it, it cuts fine and it's really easy. And it is very easy to, um, to, you know, to collage down. But anyway, I would definitely recommend using thinner paper. It just makes it an easier result and it, and it collages a lot easier onto these canvas, those little mini canvases. Um, so anyway, this is, this is where I'm gonna end this, this video in just kind of showing you how to lay it out and to be sure and get a ton of these, of these little papers. The next one I'll show you, we'll talk about um, just collaging them down and finishing them up. So when I collage these down, I'm just gonna show you a few, maybe only even one for the sake of example. I, um, because my paper is so thin, I'm working on vintage book paper. Most of this is, uh, all of this is. Um, it, it will lay down really nicely. So I'm going to grab a piece of deli paper here. So I should have done that before I started. And I'm just going to lay it down here with my matte medium. And I'm going to, uh, you know, just cover the back of my paper. Now, you would not have to do this the way I'm doing it, but I, I'm wanting a good, um, I want it to adhere strong. I want the, it, yeah, to be easy. And I don't want it to start um, coming up on the edge. So 
I'm going to apply it to both. Typically, you wouldn't do that with collage. You just go down and over the top. But I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go over the top on this because I want it to. I want to finish it with a spray. I think instead of having the matte medium on top because it just gives a slightly different result. Now I'm gonna use my scraping tool, but you could also use, you know, like a key credit card or a, you know, something like that. Cause you do want it to lay flat. You do want the air bubbles to be out. So, okay, I can feel that that's really secure. But again, you can look and see, am I, is it pulling up? Kind of does feel like it. So. It, it really soaks into the, um, the paper. So I would just, you know, use your hand or use a, a, um, a scraping device and just, you know, I, I don't think you can actually use too much of this, particularly, sorry, I can't even talk, um, particularly because in this, for, these, for this purpose, I'm actually not going over the top because I'm going to use a spray varnish as a finish. So, you know, just making sure it's completely you know, all the way around. And then I'm, you know, obviously I'm just kind of wiping it off. Now, if you see this sheen on here because the, the uh, matte medium has gotten on the at, that is an easy fix later because you've already painted your sides. You can just do a, a one coat of the, of the paint color that you've used on the sides and that'll go over that and just take away that sheen. So anyway, that is pretty much how I apply the papers to the, um, to the canvases. You know, I do not go over the top, uh, which is, you know, in the most collage, you would go back over the top. So I guess I, yeah, I guess, you know, for the sake of example, I think one is fine. That seems pretty clear on how to do that, get a nice tight uh, adhesion. And then you are pretty much done. The final step in this process is I apply a spray fixative because each of these I have used different mixed media, some, you know, pastel pencils, all kinds of paints, inks, all kinds of different things. I want them all to have the, the same finish and I want to seal in anything that might not, uh, might not be permanent. So I use this, um, Sinania, <laughs> there you go. I can't even pronounce it. Senile, uh, fixative. And it is, says it's for soft pastels, but it, it will fix, it'll be, it's fine for anything. Um, you know, I use it for any of these. So basically, you know, you, I've, shake, I've shaken it ahead of time. You definitely want to do this with your windows open or outside if you can. And then I just do a couple quick, you know, across one way, kind of pause for a minute and then back the other direction. And you can kind of hold it up and see, I can see that it's, it's all covered. Um, on the camera, it might not show that, but I can see uh, that it's all damp and it's covered and it will be fixed. And so um, it'll be set and ready to go. Uh, I will, um, this is the final step. I'm gonna take a photo of all of the uh, little minis all together because um, obviously, you know, to watch each one be uh, collaged on and then um, sprayed doesn't make a lot of sense, but I will take a photo of the final collection and thank you for joining me. And I hope that you buy a little set of minis and uh, use your, you know, your papers to create a little, a little collection because it's, it's a lot of fun and it's actually, uh, it's pretty easy. Thanks for joining me.